Say the Holy Spirit. Being filled with the Holy Spirit. I'll just lay a few facts um, um, before us. Being filled with the Holy Spirit is a second experience after salvation. It's not, actually, it's not actually being filled, being baptized. Being baptized in the Holy Spirit is a second experience after being born again. Every person who is born again has the Holy Spirit in them. If you are born again, you have the Holy Spirit. Say, I'm born again. I have the Holy Spirit in me. You didn't be born again if you didn't have the Holy Spirit in you. Is that okay? Now, it is one thing to have the Holy Spirit in you. It's, also, it's another thing to, for you to be inside the Holy Spirit. So to be baptized in the Holy Spirit is to be immersed inside the Holy Spirit. Yesterday we had water baptism. Water baptism means to be immersed in water. The word baptizo means to completely immerse. The word baptizo means what? Are we here? Say the, say the word baptizo means to completely immerse. So if you are baptized in water, you must be completely immersed inside water. Just like the word to drink water means to take water, put it inside your mouth. Is that true? Is that true? So I cannot say I'm drinking water, then I'm putting it, I'm sprinkling it on my head. If I'm drinking water, the action I'm doing must show that I'm doing what? Drinking water. This is why we baptize you again, even, the, even if somebody sprinkled water on you. You know, there are some people when they were young, they went somewhere and they were done what? Sprinkled on water and they say, I now baptize you. It's not true. It's like saying, I'm drinking water, but I'm pouring it out. It's not, the, it's not true. So what you, must, you are doing must be showing the, what you are saying. So here. So to be baptized means to be completely immersed. To be baptized in the Holy Spirit means to be completely immersed in the Holy Spirit. So when you are born again, you have the Holy Spirit in you. When you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, you, uh, the Holy Spirit has you in him. So here. Now the indication, the physical, the outward indication that you have been immersed inside the Holy Spirit is speaking in tongues. The outward indication, that you, how do we know you have been immersed in the Holy Spirit? You start speaking in tongues. So when you are born again, you now must be immersed inside the Holy Spirit so that you get the power of God. When you are immersed inside the Holy Spirit, the power of God comes upon you. Apostle Paul asked believers, he said, have you been baptized in the, in the book of Acts? Have you been baptized in the Holy Spirit since you were saved? The people said, we didn't even know there was a Holy Spirit. <laughs> So they were born again, um, I think through Apollos, and they were not taught about the Holy Spirit. So when Apostle Paul came, he said, since you are saved, were you baptized in the Holy Spirit? The people didn't say, we had not even heard that there was what? A Holy Spirit. And it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus and finding some disciples, Acts chapter 19, verse 1. He said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they said to him, we have not so much as heard whether there is what? A Holy Spirit. So they were believers. They were born again. But nobody had taught them about the Holy Spirit. If they died, they would go to heaven. Because you don't go to heaven by being filled with the Holy Spirit. You go to heaven by believing in Jesus. Is that okay? But since they were born again, nobody had taught them that there was even a Holy Spirit. 
So they didn't know. So hata tujasikia hii maneno. Kwamba kuna nini? Kuna Holy Spirit. Next verse. And he said to them, into what then were you baptized? So they said into John's baptism like we had yesterday. What you had yesterday was John's baptism, immersing in water. Next verse. Then Paul said, John indeed baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him. That is on Jesus, on Christ Jesus. Next verse. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, next verse. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke with tongues and did what? Prophesied. So when Paul laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them. How did we know that the Holy Spirit came upon them? And so the Holy Spirit will come upon you today and you will speak in tongues and you shall prophesy in Jesus' name. They spoke in tongues and they prophesied. Jesus, he told his disciples after he died and resurrected, he said, don't do anything. Go and tarry where? In Jerusalem. He said, I'm going now, but don't start your ministry now. First go where? And do what? And wait there. I am going to pray the Father and he will send you another comforter. He said, wait in Jerusalem until you are endued with power. He says, I know you are born again. But to live this life, you need power. To live this life, you need power. So even though you are born again, first hold on. Wait until power comes on you from on high. So a lot of you have been born again. You have been baptized in water. Now what do you need? power. And how does that power come to you? Through the Holy Spirit. Luke 24, 49 says, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Now, as a body, we don't need to tarry in Jerusalem anymore. Then they had to tarry because the Holy Spirit had not come to the world. You know, the first time the Holy Spirit came on earth is when he came on the, on the, upon the disciples. He used to land on people. God used to land on people, individuals. But when the Holy Spirit was released on earth, it came like a mighty rushing wind. Is that okay? And landed on the disciples. That's the first time the Holy Spirit entered the earth. So here. So, with our generation, we are not expecting the Holy Spirit to enter again the earth. The Holy Spirit is now here. Say so the Holy Spirit is now here. Because I'm saying this because there's somebody who will be waiting somewhere for a mighty rushing wind. The Bible says mighty rushing wind. Okay. Wind begin to rush. The, the Holy Spirit already rushed in. Now he's here. Is that okay? Now he's here. Say so the Holy Spirit is now on earth. It is just my job to receive him into my life in Jesus' name. Acts chapter 2, verse 2 to 3 says, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house. You know, if you were in the wind, you would say the whole house. It filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each one of them. So as we're sitting here, the Holy Spirit will come upon people. Is that okay? The Holy Spirit is God's gift to the believer. Say the Holy Spirit is the promise of God to me as a believer. He is a gift that God gives me. Do you know one characteristic of a gift? 
you don't work for a gift. Say, I don't labor for a gift. I don't qualify for a gift. A gift is given to me outside of my merits. Because if I have to count your merits, then it's not a gift, it's a reward. If your merits matter, then it is no longer a gift, it is what? A reward. A gift means, the, the, a gift de it doesn't depend on the recipient, it depends on the one who is giving. A gift does not depend on the one receiving, it depends on the one giving. Is the one giving who decides to give a gift. I just appear and say, I have a gift for you. If my gift has conditions and it's no longer a gift, it is what? A reward. It's wages. But a gift has to be conditionless. So every believer who believes in Jesus has opportunity to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So here. Yeah. Any righteous person will be automatically filled with the Holy Spirit. The righteousness is a vacuum for the Holy Spirit. Say righteousness creates a vacuum for the Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit has a, righteousness is a magnet. Holy Spirit akiona righteousness and ingia apo. Holy Spirit, I can righteousness, and I get up. Now, the good thing is, as a believer, you have been given righteousness. Jesus went to be baptized. In which river was Jesus baptized at? Galilee. You know, this church is a church of Bible scholars. Eh? Jesus was baptized where? River Jordan. When he went to be baptized by John the Baptist, John understood this man as higher grace than I am. John was refusing to baptize him. Jesus said, no, 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 no. Allow it to be so for now. Why? So that we can fulfill all righteousness. But Jesus answered, Matthew chapter 5, verse 15, and said to him, permit it to be so now. For thus, it is fitting for us to fulfill. Jesus said, I need to be baptized so that all righteousness is fulfilled. My baptism is part of fulfilling righteousness. Is that okay? So when John baptized Jesus, Jesus fulfilled what? Good morning. When John baptized Jesus, Jesus fulfilled what? Righteousness. The Bible says, after he had baptized him, when he was coming out, what happened? Next verse. Then Jesus was led up. No, 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 no. Can you give me the... And when he had been baptized, and Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, what happens? The heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God doing what? Descending like a dove and alighting on him. Why? He had fulfilled all righteousness. So when you fulfill all righteousness, you are an automatic landing ground for what? The Holy Spirit. When you fulfill all, now the Bible says, in Christ, all righteousness is fulfilled. This is the book of Romans. Say, I am in Christ. Because I'm in Christ, I have fulfilled all righteousness. It says, because you are in Christ, you have done the same thing Jesus did by being baptized. Your being in Christ is a fulfillment of what? All righteousness. You don't need to do another thing to fulfill all righteousness. Camila do marica vadaradaba. Said that Romans 8 4 said that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit. The Bible says, For in Christ all the righteousness, all the requirements of righteousness have been fulfilled. Say, I'm in Christ. That entitles me. 
to have fulfilled all the requirements of righteousness. How did you fulfill the requirements of righteousness that were given to you? When you got born again, the new person was born again righteous. First Corinthians 5.20 from 17 says, God, 5.21, God made him who knew no sin to be seen for us. So because the cross of Jesus, uh, Romans 10, for say, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. So when you're in Christ, your righteousness is not measured according to law, according to whether you, how you have done or not done. It's measured of who you are and where you are. Say, I'm in Christ. Say, I am in Christ. Say, I have become like him. I have fulfilled all righteousness. Therefore, the Holy Spirit will land on me the same way he landed on Jesus. I'm trying to divorce your mind from religion. Because religion says you must wear a white kanzu. You must put something on your head, blue or red or whatever color. You must carry a drum and bang it around the city. You must jump around and for five hours before the Holy Spirit will even consider looking in your way. This is what religion tells you. Some religion tell you you must look for a cave in deep Mount Kerinyaga. Enter there for 14 days. Talk with goats. Whatever, man. They now come out. And now because of that, the Holy Spirit will... No, 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 no. If you're in Christ, all the requirements of righteousness are fulfilled in you. Because the cross of Jesus is an altar, there was an exchange that took place. So, say, because of, the, it's because of the cross of Jesus, there was an exchange that took place. I taught you about altars. You know, altars are places of exchange. Eh? The, the main thing about altar is exchanges take place there. Is that okay? The cross is also... The cross of Jesus is, in fact, is the biggest altar in the universe. Is that okay? And even there, an exchange took place. That exchange says, God made Jesus, who knew no sin, to become. And at the same time, what happened to you? You became the righteousness of God. That's what happened to, at the cross. That's why the cross is very important, because it is there that the exchange took place. For he made him, he means who? Jesus, who knew no sin to be seen for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Second Corinthians 5.21. Say, God made Jesus, who knew no sin, to become sin. Say, God made me, who knows a lot of sin, to become righteous. So you are not righteous because of anything you do or did. You are righteous because you have taken the righteousness that was supposed to be of Jesus. God changed de destinies. We have talked here about destiny hijacking. Eh? God changed what? God hijacked the destiny of Jesus and gave it to you. God hijacked your funny, full, full, foul destiny filled with the calamities and gave it to Jesus. God did destiny hijacking. God did what? God did destiny hijacking. So at the cross of Jesus, you became righteous. At the cross of Jesus, Jesus became sin. How many believe Jesus became sin? That's the only way he died. You know, Jesus was sinless. Eh? Jesus was? So if you are sinless, death cannot touch you. They couldn't kill Jesus. Do you understand? Okay. Death is the wages of what? 
The Bible says the wages of sin, good. If there's no sin, you don't have wages. Is that okay? So Jesus didn't have these wages of sin. So the only way Jesus could die is if he became sin. He didn't become a sinner. He became sin. It means he didn't, it means he didn't commit his own sin. He took ours. Is that okay? Is that okay? So if God can take my sin and put on him, and the proof that my sin has been put on me is that he died. Is that true? Is that true? When you say, I plead the blood of Jesus, you are proving that Jesus died. And if Jesus died, it means your sin is not on you. Because sin is not omnipotent. It can only be on one person at a time. Sin cannot be everywhere at the same time. Sin is not God. Is that okay? So my sin is either on me or somebody else. If it is on Jesus, it cannot be counted on me. You can't count it in two places. You can't count it. Like say uko uko wapa tuti, sindio? Uwezi countiwa uko nyumbani. Ha uko nyumbani, uko wapa. You cannot be counted in two places. So Jesus took my sin. Jesus God gave me the righteousness that Jesus had. In fact, the righteousness that I've been given is the righteousness of God. Say the righteousness of God. Do you know what that means? That means the same way God is righteous. God and myself, we have the same righteousness. The same way, the righteousness that God has and my righteousness, they are the same. He gave me his righteousness. So when God stands here, and when you are looking at righteousness, on the righteousness measuring scale, kama the highest righteousness measuring scale ni miyamoja. Mungu wa kisimama kwa hiyo scale. Yake ni gapi? Na mimi ni kisimama yangu ni gapi? Miyamoja. Because we have the same one. They are here. So yours is not inferior to the one of God. That's why in the spirit, you and God look alike. See, in the spirit realm, God and I look alike. Ni kama tuko selfie ya mtu moja. Ni sawa. Are you understand what I'm saying? And because of this, the Holy Spirit comes to you automatically. Do you think God struggles to receive the Holy Spirit? Nafikiria Mungu akitaka Holy Spirit aingie ndani yake ana struggle sana, anaomba sana. Sema Holy Spirit come pam 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 shata back. I've prepared my spirit for you. Now enter, enter. Do you think God does this? God is automatic habitation of the Holy Ghost, true? The same way God is an automatic habitation of the Holy Spirit, you are also an automatic habitation of the Holy Spirit, because you are God's righteousness. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. Say, God made Jesus, who knew no sin, to be seen for me, so that in him I might be made the righteousness of God. This is very important, but Christians 99.99976 and a quarter, they don't know this one. Our Jew, they think they are sinners because they look at their behavior, they look at their behavioral patterns, they look at their word, they look at all kinds of things except what God has done. The best definition of righteousness is the Kiswahili definition. Change now. Go and sit down. Mutu mengine akuje. Now I must regulate this matter. Eh, endo kai chini hata wewe. Endo kai vizuri kama kuna juice kunywa. Relax, mutu pe cake. He has worked very hard for the kingdom of God. What was I saying? 
Eh? The best definition of righteousness is the Swahili definition. The definition of righteousness in Swahili is what? Mwenye haki. Sema mwenye haki. So a righteous person is not a person who behaves well. It's a person who has rights. A righteous person is not anywhere, a person, okay, behaving well is a consequence of believing that you're righteous. Is that okay? So a righteous person is a person who has rights. So if you're righteous, it means the things of God are yours by right. Say, I am righteous. The Holy Spirit is mine by right. God has made the Holy Spirit to be yours by, it is your right to be filled with the Holy Spirit. In fact, if you are not being filled with the Holy Spirit, your rights are being violated. Somebody is violating your rights. Because you are righteous. Wewe ni mwenye haki. Ukona hiyo haki. You have the right to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You have the right to be rich. You have the right for God to heal you. You have the right for God to bless you. You have the right to hear God and for God to speak to you. Say, I hear. Say, um, it say the Holy Spirit fills me by right. It is my right to be filled with the Holy Spirit because I am the righteousness of God. So the righteousness of God in your life has nothing to do with you. You just accept it. It is God who did all the work. This is the major, major difference between Christianity and every other religion. Every other belief system will tell you, you must go somewhere and earn your own righteousness. There's a set of rules that you must follow exactly so that you can be able at the end to earn righteousness. So they're always struggling. I have you are white. The whiter it is, the more righteousness you have. Va ka kofia ka white. Uh uwa kafiri. Uki uwa wengine wote sama ya sasa jiwe weka bom up a jilipue sasa. What are they looking for? Righteousness. God, the, what these people are looking for, kujilipua nini nini nini. You, you get it as a gift. By believing on Jesus. When you accept Jesus, what do you accept about Jesus? That he took your sin. And if he took your sin, then you don't have it. Because sin is not omnipotent. Sin is not? If Jesus took your sin, which sin did Jesus take? Listen. When Jesus took your sin, you were not born. Were you born? You were not born. So he, could be, so he was able to take all of them. The day you were born, the day you grew up, until the day you die, if Jesus studies, he could take all of them because you were not there. He could look at all of them in the future and collect them. Is that true? So you cannot say, okay, when I got born again, Jesus took that sin, but the one for today he has not taken. He took all. They are here. God does not forgive in installments. God does not forgive in installments. This is the forgiveness for today. There's another one you have to earn next month. There's, there's one for, for the one for next year you have not qualified for. Yo, 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 pastors. Afan. Zambali kado bazadaya. Say, I'm righteous. That means the Holy Spirit will land on me the same way. He landed on Jesus. Do you believe that? Now, I need to move on. When the Holy Spirit fills you, and you speak in tongues, 
I want to say there are two kinds of tongues. So that we don't confuse them because there are people who have been confused by religion. One type of tongue which we are not talking about today is a message that God gives in a congregation and God gives that message in tongues. So we can be here. Na mungu ongeleshe mtu. So kuna message inakujanga. Is that okay? Sasa tuko hapa mungu anaongelesha mtu. Nasikia mtu anaanza tu, "Rabu kati, munga lika for chat riviko, tundumu somaki aloru. Rukubuku dukubu." Hapo tu mtu anashtuka tu. Hata Kristo tukikoanga nai sana. Sawa? What? Ini tongues, ini message. Is that okay? Ini nini? Ni message. Sasa hii message is of no use to us mpaka mtu afanye nini? Af- interpret. Sasa mtu akipata message hiyo lazima tungoje, mwingine atapata interpretation. I am the Lord. I am speaking to my children. Sasa hiyo message na hiyo interpretation inaka ni prophet ukicombine hizo mbili ni prophecy is that okay mimi kama prophet naweza toa tu prophecy that said the lord this 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 and this or i used to do that when i was first prophesying i would first give the message in tongues then i would interpret the tongues i can do that I can look at you and say kalos makindi atumaz karibu use and then i give the interpretation of the thing is that okay because if i give you the message in tongues and i don't interpret haikusaidi sasa hii ndio apostle paul anasema when this is in church let there be two or at most three ya hizo after that let us have the interpretation sema here manake mtu akitoa kama kumi. na mtu akuja interpret utashindwa na interpret ya nani ni sawa Lazima kuwe na mbili ama tatu. Alafu wangoje kwanza tupate. And if there's no interpretation mwenye ametoa, aombe Mungu apatiwe interpretation. Otherwise, ni kama unachezea nini mbuzi gitaa. So the Bible says, let there be two. Uh-huh. Let's read it together. One, two, three. Eh 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 Wonderful eh 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 Says kama hakuna interpreter achana na hiyo message utaleta confusion Is that okay Ukipatiwa message ya ndimi na unajua hapa hakunanga interpreter uta too confused tutashinda kwani labda tutakupeleka huko for deliverance nene sisi game next verse ehe 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 Eh 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 So mtu akitoa message na tongue na mwingine atoe interpretation the combination of those ni nini ni prophecy Let's celebrate the servant of God. We love you so much sir. Where you come? I hope hii hii wame wameweka mabarabara nini haijaje kutatiza sana. People are running man of God. What you don't know is what they are running from. Atijaambiwa hii hii revelation. So, 
kama ni hiyo let one or two or let two or three speak at most and let them let, let us wait for interpretation sasa hiyo is not what we are talking about today today we want to talk about your prayer language we want to talk about hiyo you can say any time and hiyo you don't require another person to interpret to you are you listening because people get confused what do I, what are they speaking why they are just saying rab 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 the bible says people must interpret nobody is interpreting these ones no 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 get the difference get the get the difference what you want to believe god for today is your prayer language not a message to the church it's your own personal prayer language the bible calls it praying in the spirit not speaking in a tongue praying in the spirit the bible says i can pray in understanding i can pray in the spirit i can also pray in understanding i can sing in the spirit i can also sing in understanding so god gives you the ability through the holy spirit to pray in the spirit and to pray in understanding to sing in the spirit and to sing in understanding Are you listening to me it is profitable when you pray in the spirit because the bible says he who prays in an unknown tongue he builds himself up so praying in tongues is one of the ways of building yourself up of doing what you become very strong spiritually when you pray a lot in tongues say so here they understand you build yourself up in the book of jude the bible says building yourself up in your most holy faith praying in the holy ghost so when you are praying in the holy ghost what you are doing is you're putting building blocks in your spirit you're putting until you become a giant in the spirit so here they're here, they're here. jude chapter 1 verse 20 says but you beloved build building yourself up on your most holy faith praying in the holy spirit the version say through or via praying in the holy spirit so when i'm praying in the holy spirit one of the things i'm doing i'm building myself up is that okay so you find people who are strong in the spirit are people who pray a lot in the spirit now the prayer in the spirit is not necessary that somebody else interprets for you the bible says he who is praying in the spirit it is not your mind who is praying it is your spirit that is praying the bible says when i pray in an, in in the spirit my mind is unfruitful say my mind is unfruitful so one of the thing god does is he should circuit your mind when you are praying in tongues so it means even me I don't know what I am saying. So somebody how come we don't know what we are saying? The Bible says they must interpret for us. Many the people No, no, no. You are supposed not to know what you are saying because your mind is unfruitful. The reason your mind is unfruitful is because a lot of the times your mind is unrenewed and it stands in the way of your prayer. Say the a lot of the times your mind is what? And it does what? stands in the way of your prayer let me give you an example god has your destiny in juba south sudan and he wants to send you there but for him to send you there prayer must be made if you knew this is what you are praying about you'd stop <laughs> you'd stop <laughs> say no 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 let us negotiate this matter <laughs> is that okay So God should circuit the mind so that you can pray the perfect will of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 14 say let's read it 1 2 3. Uh-huh what is praying? But then So when I pray in a tongue in the spirit it is my spirit that is praying. But my mind is unfruitful. So it is okay 
not to be aware of what you are praying for if you are praying in your prayer language. You don't, know to, you don't need to know everything. So God has left himself that avenue so that he can use you as a vessel for him to pray through you. Say, say hallelujah. Because sometimes God sees the whole body of Christ. Is that okay? So sometimes there's something happening in Ukraine to a Christian and you don't know. And God wants prayer so that he can go rescue that person. But if God comes to you and says, okay, now, I need you to pray for somebody in uh, um, Siberia, Russia, who is being done this, this, and this, you said, okay, God, what about my rent? Why am I praying out for Russia? I've not sorted my own issues. You need extra. I don't have... Watch out to you on Wednesday. Kwanza to, to solve it. So God has to find a way of using you without involving you. Because you are too selfish sometimes. We want our needs met fast. Say so here. So when I pray in the spirit, my mind is unfruitful. So this, become, this sometimes becomes a stumbling block for people who don't understand. Say, do, do, are you, do, do you know what you are saying? How can you say something you don't know? That is not real. The Bible says, they, no, no, no. My mind is unfruitful. My mind is unfruitful. So I yield myself to God for my spirit, for God to pray through my spirit so that he can pray the perfect will of God. Say here. The other thing, when I'm praying, my neighbor also doesn't know it's none of their business. My neighbor also doesn't know. Because we have those the, the new believers who come here and they are listening to other people's tongues, they're trying to say, when I say my name. When I say my name. He's bringing the Isumbereism to church. So your neighbor also, Bible says, when you're speaking in a tongue, you are not speaking to men. So you're not speaking to your neighbor. So your neighbor is not aware of what you're saying. They are here. So let nobody intimidate you. Say, I was, you are just speaking gibberish. We could not understand what you are saying. We must be able to understand. Are you God? You don't. Bible says you are not speaking to men. So men don't understand you. You are speaking to God. You are not speaking to men, but to God. 1 Corinthians 14, 2. two. One, two, three. Let's read. Uh -huh. Does not speak. But to whom? For? Oh. So the one who doesn't understand you is part of this no one. So don't let your auntie who does not speak in tongues, has never spoken in tongues. In fact, their tongues is heavy like of a cow. They must not now intimidate you with their religion. Biblia no one understands me. No one ni wewe. No one? Eh. No one? No one? No one ni wewe. Don't bring me your third world problems. Bible says, in the spirit, he speaks. How many would like to speak mysteries today? Your mouth shall be spitting. You know, kuna watu wana spit, wana spitting in ini. Lyrics. Eh? Things wana spit in ini. Buzz. 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 Twelve buzz. Oh, things are a spit, and a spit my 12 bars. Since it's a spit my mystery. Neme kuja leo kwa spitia my mystery. 
tunaspiti nini? The Bible says when you are speaking when you are praying in the spirit you are speaking mysteries. Mtu asikucheze. Sema ukizichezea nitaanza kuspiti hapa nini? Ma mystery. Una spit ma mystery. Ta spit mystery hautaelewa. Spit sasa kandoshi ya bulaka. Zuba zuba zuba. <laughs> You na speak mystery when you speak in an unknown tongue you speak or you speak mysteries you are speaking to god not to man i'm speaking to not i'm speaking to god not to man so don't let man bring problems in your conversation with your father When you are born naturally you get your mother tongue is that true When you are born when you are born spiritually you get your father tongue Hallelujah When you are born naturally you get your mother tongue When you are born spiritually you acquire father tongue Today somebody must acquire father tongue and speak mysteries in the precious name of Jesus The best way to thank God is to speak in tongues The Bible says when you pray in tongues you give thanks well Hatujui kumpigia Mungu asante vile inahitajika but when you are speaking in the spirit you are giving thanks well the bible says yes you give thanks well so the most well way of giving thanks to god is to speak in the spirit for indeed you you for you indeed give thanks well but the other person is not edified you're not edifying others you're edifying yourself So if you are feeling very grateful to God, Mungu amekufanyia maajabu and you want to give thanks to him. The best way to give thanks to God is to bypass your understanding and to pray in tongues because praying in tongues is giving thanks well. I give thanks well. Is somebody understanding something? I want to conclude. How do I know that the one speaking through me is Holy Spirit? Unajua bana. I am a prophet. Unaweza jipata umejazwa pepo. Hata mapepo ni spirit. Unajua hizi hizi. Mimi nitajuaje? Ni Holy Spirit ame come. Na sika spirit kingine tumechukua kutoka Gidurai. Wazee tumetoka Gidurai. Na jua jeni Holy Spirit. Na si Gidurai Spirit. Eh? Si imbo. Imbo ni nini? Imbo ni fake. Eh? Mbwakni. Mbwakni ni fake. Eh sasa mimi nataka spirit yenye si imbo si mbwakni nataka ile original ile authentic nitajuaje hii spirit huyu niwempata ni yule na si mbwakni The Bible says who, who baptizes with the Holy Spirit Jesus John said I baptize you with water 
but he who is coming, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So when you baptize the Holy Spirit, see PFA. Mi sinanga Holy Spirit ni meweka kwangu na kujanga church ni mebeba na baptize na watu. Holy Spirit brand, PFA version. <laughs> mebeba, ni kona kabag. Na uza Holy Spirit beya jioni. Apana, I don't have. Mwenye ana baptize nani? Matthew 3:11 says, "I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry." Who is that? Who is talking about who? Jesus. Who is talking now? John the Baptist. He says, "He, Jesus, will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire." So John ametuambia neno linasema ukiongea na Yesu atakupatia nini Holy Spirit na fire Na Biblia inasema are you here Wait 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 at me I'm I'm finishing The Bible says if you ask your father for bread atakupatia nini mawe Ukiuliza baba yako nataka mkati baba yako si muovu hata kupatia substitute hata kupatia mawe jiwe ukiuliza baba yako nataka samaki hata kupatia nini nyoka nyoka ni devil si ndio nyoka ni ile mbwakni is that okay she says if your father if you being wicked know how to give good gifts to your children how much more will your father in heaven give the holy spirit to those who ask him so if you go to the father umulize holy spirit hata kupatia devil so you can be sure kama ni mungu wa biblia mungu wa binguni ndiye nimemuuliza ani baptize na holy spirit Huyo Mungu akinisikia hata nipatia substitute. Is that okay? Luke 11:3 says if you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children how much more will your heavenly father give the holy spirit to those who ask him. Let's read it together 1 2 3. Read it louder 1 2 3. Eh uh-huh. Okay. Eh 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 How much more will your heavenly father give the holy spirit to those who ask him So today we shall go to him we shall ask him to baptize us to give us who the holy spirit and we know if you ask him to give us the holy spirit he will not give us stone if you ask for fish he will not give snake so you should not be scared you see the devil is not more powerful than god uwezi kuwa una interact na mungu unamuliza holy spirit alafu hapa katikati kuna kadevo kanaingilia kana kanakupa yake Kambwa kini fulani alitoa huko. Mali gamura minda gavairi yetu sima kipala kiradu mazima. Unasikia ni kama leo kutafanyika? Hiyo hiyo faith inaanza ku rise. Ni kama hii kitu ilikuwa ni kama pia mimi na qualify pale. Yet we are used in Kenya to being disqualified for things. <laughs> you apply job <laughs> you are disqualified unaenda wapi una apply police recruitment you are disqualified unaangalia meno unapata you removed one molar <laughs> you are out so let me finish by saying let's let's recap say so number 1 
I'm God's righteousness. Say, I'm the righteousness of God. Say, in Christ, all the requirements of righteousness have been fulfilled in me. I am God's righteousness. At the cross, God made Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin for me, that in him I might be made into the righteousness of God. Say, I am as righteous as God is. Say, righteousness ni mwenye haki. Say, being righteous gives me rights in God. Say, the things of God now belong to me by right. Say, it is my right because of righteousness to be filled with the Holy Spirit. It is my right to receive the Holy Spirit of God because God has made me righteous. The same righteousness that God has, he has given to me. To kona righteousness same. Ajanipa ingine fi inferior. Amenipa ile yake. Is that okay? Say righteousness is vacuum for the Holy Spirit. Because I'm righteous, the Holy Spirit is anxious to occupy me because I am vacuum for him. Say so when I am filled with the Holy Spirit, I know I am able to, to speak in tongues and to prophesy because everybody who was filled in the Bible spoke in tongues and prophesied. He said, when I speak in tongues, my mind is unfruitful. So it is okay not to know what I am saying because it is God bypassing my mind. My spirit is praying. My mind is unfruitful. So when I speak in tongues, others don't understand what I am saying. Because the Bible says, no one understands those who are praying in tongues. They are speaking mysteries unto God. Say, today, I'll be speaking mysteries and nobody will understand except my God in Jesus' name. Say, I am sure when I ask God for the Holy Spirit, he will not give me a demon spirit because the Bible says, if I ask my father for bread, he will not give me stone. If I ask my father for fish, he will not give me a snake. Even wicked people, even evil people know how to give good gifts to their children. How much more will my father in heaven give me the Holy Spirit because I have asked of him. Today, I'm asking of him, of the Holy Spirit. He will not give me a demon in Jesus' name. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Who today say I will be filled with the Holy Spirit? The baptism of the Holy Spirit is not for special people. It's for every believer. It's for who? For every believer. If you are a believer, you have a right, because you are righteous, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, you have not, because... Are you here? You have not... You have not because you ask not. You have not because you ask not. Number two, the Bible says, everyone who asks receives. It says, ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek, 
Knock. Look at me. We 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 are finishing. Unaka kuchoka sana. The Bible says, "Ask." Let's read it together. Matthew chapter seven, verse seven. Number one, two, three. Uh huh. Uh huh. Good. Next verse. So the Bible says, everyone who asks, how many people? How many people? How many people? The Bible says, everyone who asks. So you cannot ask, especially if you are doing it according to the will of God, and God says you, I will not give. Okay, Holy Ghost. Okay, nekama, hauko ready. Everyone who asks, everyone who asks, everyone who asks, everyone who asks, so everyone who asks receives. Everyone who asks receives. Everyone. Everyone. How many people? Everyone. Are you part of everyone? Does everyone include you? Say, I'm included in the everyone. Everyone who asks, receives. So you cannot ask and you say, my, your, my own case is special. I think my, I will receive tomorrow. Everyone who asks, receives. Everyone. The Bible also says, when you pray, believe that you receive and you will receive. When in the book of Mark, when you pray, and then, when do you believe? Okay, let's read Mark 11, 24, 1, 2, 3. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. I have a question. When do you believe? When do you believe? When you pray is when you believe. After you've believed, what will happen? You'll receive. Whatever you ask for. When you pray, at the time you are praying, that's when you must believe you have already received. Is that okay? So we are going to pray now. And then after we pray, we shall believe. After we believe, we shall receive. Is that okay? When you pray, believe. Now, the word believe does not mean to sit somewhere and try to work up emotions. I'm believing now. I believe. I believe it. I believe it. I'm believing. I'm believing. You know, there are people who think to believe is to push some emotional thing, to screw your face up to angle theater and show people how you are now believing. No, the word believe means act from that time as if whatever you have prayed on has already been done. The word believe means act as if what you are praying for has already been done. To believe means to act. If you believe, you will act. Let me give you an example I normally give. If I come here and say, this building is on fire. It's burning. And then you tell me, we believe you. Do you really believe me? If you believe me, how will I know? You will do something. Is that okay? Belief is action. Belief is? If you believe, I will see it. If you believe, so when we ask for the Holy Spirit, we must believe. We must do what? We must do what? We must believe. To believe is to act. So we'll pray to God. God will fill you with the Holy Spirit, and then you must believe. Now, believe that you are filled does not 
reduce the sound. Believing that you're filled is not about what you feel. The word of God is not about feelings. There are people who pray, Father, I'm asking you now. Your word says if I ask for stone, if I ask for fish, you'll not give me snake. I'm asking for the Holy Spirit. Fill me with the Holy Spirit now in Jesus' name. Amen. I believe I receive the Holy Spirit now. Then they wait. So, are uh, you an Angoja But they're waiting either Mutu are going to up on a hammer. Ta! Ama a wind, Ama everything turns purple. Ama a ski, a muguna, tatameka, tatatatatata. They were just as a Holy Ghost, a mekuja. Sayo Kim Guza Ivi, a taruka. At a fikria ni ho, ni Holy Ghost. You feel nothing. Is that okay? Say, I feel nothing. It's not about feelings. It's about faith in the word of God. So what are you When nothing happens, then they start talking about, Mungu na ninyima Holy Ghost. Si unipe Holy Ghost ni kitu ya kunyima mtu. Because they didn't feel something. Hawa kuzikia tumbo ikifanya chuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchu
anakuja na kushika na kuangusha na ku, anakufanya uh, addiction uwezi you cannot help yourself holy spirit is not like that holy spirit leads you what does he do he leads you but you must follow yeye yeah, anatembea mbele ni wewe ufwa ufuate is that okay but for holy spirit to move man must move fast man must move who moves fast okay the bible says these signs shall follow them that believe in my name they shall speak in new tongues this sign shall ah uh, bana i'm trying to help you the sign shall do what good if the signs are following who is leading me i'm the one leading so speaking in tongues is a sign that follows me so if i don't lead nothing follows so i must lead because the signs they do what they follow so here a lot of believers maybe because of their respect for god they want god to lead them they want god to go fast because we are so to be to make nyekea sana tunataka kumfuata mungu mungu tembea tutakufuata mungu anasema i work by faith onyesha imani na mimi nitaingilia onyesha nini imani so when you pray you believe what is to believe to act as if what you have just prayed has already been done is that okay so if you ask god for the holy spirit the bible says everybody who asks receives you are everybody if you ask in jesus name god has heard you and he has given you god has heard you mungu anyimani holy spirit sawa so if god has given you then you now have the ability to speak in tongues ni sawa let me give you an example let me have three people we are um, finishing up nena nitatumia kama guinea pig Ah, yeah. Two ladies and a gentleman. Two gentlemen and a lady. But here our microphone. What is microphone? Keep as a you need speaker. Speaker ni nini? Ki speaker ni keep as a sauti bado. Na microphone pia ni keep as a sauti. Kiswahili yenu kimenyemelea. <laughs> mendo give you look over sir aya the bible says i will speak in tongues i will speak i will pray in tongues i will pray in understanding i will means i am de- deciding to i'm exercising my will is that okay aya brian you got a microphone where can i put it on the mouth i went at the count of 3 start speaking in tongues 1 2 3 rika tayando goes start ri baba baba hande start keteriko yande re bazai ra bahando koto so who's making you start and stop is it the holy spirit who is deciding the starting and the stopping is him is not the holy spirit holy spirit should i stop i'm overwhelmed i can't stop i can't i cannot stop Wacha ku, wacha kuweka Holy Spirit awe kama shetani yenye anafuso watu kufanya vitu hawataki You must be willing in your heart you must make a this God gave you the power of choice it's not going to violate it Mungu hatafanya nini hata violate power yako ya choice wewe ndio naamua nitaomba saa hii wewe ndio naamua utanta stop saa hii Ni sawa Is that okay Hiruda Yes sir Pray in understanding Anaenda vile nimempata Pray in understanding Lord we come before you Yahweh we bless you Jesus for you God there's none like you Father mighty maker king of kings prince Go into tongues Randa kaboskian talaboshika babra Go back to understanding Eh 
Uh, Lord, we thank you, we bless you, we sanctify this place, this altar is yours. Father, let your magnificent power be seen by your people, my Lord. Today's teaching, Father, has been about... Going to, to tongues. Stop. Who was making the choice? Who was making the choice? The Bible says, I will pray in understanding when I want to. I will pray in tongues when I want to. See, Holy Spirit, when I don't want, no. Nisawa. So long as you have the confidence from the word of God that I'm immersed in the Holy Spirit, whether I feel anything or not, I can pray in tongues. Mimi naanza, alafa nani beba. Is that okay? Ukigojia akuanzie mtangojiana. Ni kama mtu is eyeing a lady, but he's never saying anything. Paka huyu anaolewa na mwingine ndiye anasema hata mimi ujue nilikoanga pale au kwa pale. You are not in the game. Jo. Pray in tongues. Sabra kushika pragisa bit. Pray in understanding. Father, I thank you for this service. We thank you for every soul is saved in the name of Jesus. I, <laughs> I think I've trained you badly. You understanding what I'm saying? Wana potaza maneno sana. I thank you for every person who has been saved. Thank you for every person who will be healed. Thank you for every person who will be delivered. Going to tanks. Zabedo baska bindo bradis katasos kapadikaba. Start. Sento prakush kadi prakush sese pradi basani. Sasa, umeona mtu hapa akifanya hivi ndiyo sasa anze. Kama anafanya fanya hivi. These things are okay and they show you yielded to God, but they are not necessary for the Holy Ghost to fill you. Sao siweke kwa mind, lazima mtu ufanya, kwa sababu uliona mmoja akifanya hivyo, useme hiyo ndiyo sasa SI unit ya Holy Ghost sasa. Nisipoona mkono inafanyika hivi, hiyo si Holy Ghost. Are we okay? Say, everyone who asks, receives. Receive. I am everyone. I am everyone. I am asking. I am asking. I will receive. I will receive. Say, when you pray. When you pray. Believe. Believe. And you will receive. And you will receive. What you have prayed for. What you have prayed for. Say, to believe. To believe. Is to go into action. Is to go into action. Knowing. Knowing. That what I have asked of God. That what I have asked Has of God already been done. Has already been in done. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Do you see this is easy? Yes. Do you see this is easy? If you knew this, you'd been you'd have been filled last month. Lakini because of lack of knowledge, you nafikiria mtu lazima kuja kufinye vile Francis alinifinyanga. Na kuna chenye kilifanyika. It's because of lack of knowledge, lack of teaching. You have too much religion on your head. You want to see pink elephants in the air, then you know God is moving. You want to walk by sight and not by faith. You want to walk by? When you are waiting for feelings, is because you are trying to walk. The word sight means senses. You are trying to walk by the outward senses and not by the word of God. You may be seated. Good prayer warriors. Celebrate them. Now it is your turn to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Is that okay? It is your? Who is here and they have never be, been filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues before? Our Jawai. Lift your hand. I'm not punishing you. Lift your hand up high. We don't get Papa will punish us. No, I will not punish you. Lift your hand up high. Aya, stand up. Sita kuita peke yako hapa mbele. Relax. Come here, all of you. Nilisema sita waita peke yayu, nikasema nitawaita collectively. So we shall pray together with you guys. Is that okay? Si nimefundisha vizuri? Si sija complicate mambo? Si umeelewa? Nimeweka sila basi na kuwa raisi. So today God will fill you.
So whether you feel anything, whether you feel away, whether you feel nothing, God will do his word. God is faithful. God is? Say, say, say my, my Lord is faithful. Now, all of you here, are you born again? Who here is not born again? So I'll lead you in a short prayer. Is that okay? We'll ask Jesus. The Bible says it's Jesus who will baptize us with the Holy Spirit and with the fire. Nisawa. Are you bored? Two hours. <laughs> Two hours. Two hours. Is that okay? So today, all these people will get filled with the Holy Ghost. But you must be bold enough to take a step of faith. To know I have been filled. And if I've been filled, I can speak in tongues. Just, just like Brian can speak in tongues. Just like Hilda can speak in tongues. Just like Joe can speak in tongues. I can also... Speak in tongues. I'm also the righteousness of God. My salvation is not inferior to others. Nisawa. Nisawa. Aya, lift your right hand. I'm going to lead you into a, pr into a prayer. Say, Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I have heard your word. Your word says, I should ask and I will receive. I should knock, I should seek. And I will find. I should knock. And the door shall be opened unto me. Your word also says. If I ask you. For bread. You will not give me stone. If I ask you for fish. You will not give me snake. Today I am asking. I am born again. I am your righteousness. You have given me the gift of righteousness. As a righteous person. I stand before you and I ask you, baptize me today in the Holy Spirit. Say, Father, I receive now the Holy Spirit from you according to your word that says, whatsoever I pray for, I must believe that I've received it and I will receive it. Now I believe that you have heard me and you have baptized me in the Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit of the living God. Say, Holy Spirit of the living God. I believe you are, you, are, you, are, you are in the Godhead. And you have come inside me when I asked the Father to bless me. You have put me in you. You have immersed me in you. According to the word of God, I am now baptized in the Holy Spirit of God. And I receive it. And Father, I thank you for this. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I want, to, I want you to pray. Now, listen to me. Have you prayed? Do you think God heard you? Uh, you don't see like you. Have you prayed? Do you think God was listening to you or he was busy somewhere in Indonesia? Do you think he was listening to you? Do you think he heard you? Do you think he has answered your prayer? Do you think I'm a kunyima wewe Holy Ghost? I'm a kupatia, sindio? Because you prayed in the name of Jesus. Is that okay? So if God I'm a kupatia Holy Ghost, na ma kuingiza ndani ya Holy Ghost, then you have the ability to speak in tongues. Now let's pray again. Say, Father, I thank you for this ability you have given me. The gift of speaking in tongues, my own prayer language. I receive that gift now. And I believe I am able now to speak in other tongues. I am going to exercise my will and faith and step out and begin to speak in Jesus' name. And as I speak, you Holy Spirit, whom I am inside now, you will carry me and speak in me. And my spirit will pray according to the word of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Was that very hard? Now, look at me. Where you are right now. You are filled with the Holy Ghost. You are immersed in the Holy Spirit. You can speak in tongues. You just have to decide to. You just have to make up your mind. Now I'm going to speak in tongues. And you start. Make up your mind. Now I'm going to stop speaking. And you start. And you stop. Is that okay? 
Give me a microphone. Say, ah, yeah. The rabbi is now meeting, the, not me, give them. <laughs> the rabbi is now meeting. The rabbi is now meeting. Who wants to go first among you here? Who wants to go first? I will not choose for you. Choose for yourself. Ah. Any all these words I've spoken have landed on hard ground. Who wants to go first? Now it requires boldness. Who wants to go first? Ah. I'm so disappointed. Ah, come. Wonderful. Celebrate, my little girl. It takes boldness to, to grab the things of God. Ah, another one. Can somebody else join her? Hey. Celebrate her. Wonderful. Wonderful. Now, these three, they have never spoken in tongues before. Is that okay? They are going to speak in tongues today for the very first time. Remember, the Bible says, when I pray in, a, in the spirit, my mind is unfruitful. My mind, it, does, it means my mind doesn't know what I'm saying. Is that okay? The Bible also says, when I pray in an unknown tongues, I'm speaking mysteries to God. No one understands me. So these people here won't understand what you're saying. So don't mind them. Is that okay? Don't mind your mind. Just speak your mysteries to God. Is that okay? I give them microphone. And the way I did with Hilda... The way I did with Brian, I'm going to do with you. Nisawa? Yes. Chica microphone. Aya, Nitanza na wewe hapa. Are you scared? Yes. On their behalf? Yes. Are you bored? No. After this, you just close. Aya, I'm going to command you to speak in tongues after the count of three. You, eh? Yes. One, two, three, start. Uh, uh, speak louder. Ah, okay. You, start. Thank you, Jesus, for this service. Okay, that is understanding. Spray and understanding. We, we give you all the glory. To I am now going to tongues. What's wrong with these people? I just prayed for you. Oh, you're waiting for a pink elephant to go through the room. Take a microphone. Uh, one, two, three, start praying. Thank you, Jesus, for this afternoon. I put the microphone. Thank you, my God, because of this afternoon. Thank and you. And I'm going to tongues. Spirits, but I'm in, uh, I pray that all oh, <laughs> celebrate Jesus Christ. Of, well, see, this is not very difficult. <laughs> Stop. What you have to overcome is the self consciousness. Mm. You have to forget yourself. It requires yielding to God. Mm. You have to forget. Everybody stand up. Everybody here will get a refreshing. Is that okay? You'll get it. When you start in tongues, you start with small syllables and it begins to grow. It begins? I want to pray for God to fill you with new tongues. With the new tongues. Tongues zako zitanza kuchange sasa. In the name of Jesus. I join them. We want to pray together. So when I say one, two, three, everybody will start praying in tongues, including you. These ones were too conscious because everybody was looking at them. So when we are praying together, you will break through. Is that okay? One, two, three, everybody go. Open your mouth and begin to pray. It is happening. It is happening. It is happening, it is happening. Pray. Pray. 
Pray out loud. Don't be scared. Don't be self-conscious. Let it go. It's happening everywhere. Pray, 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 pray. It is happening everywhere. Let go of the flesh, pray. Louder. I can't hear you. Pray louder. Pray out in tongues. Louder. Louder. Wherever you are, Langa Zaba Danguri Mandiva Supariva Rita Indaraba Sukata Ilaga Dundi Misaya. Misha, Wherever you are, the glory of Jehovah is everywhere. Minga Zamali Arundi Makuva Sindasiva Zika Bura Mindosa. Louder. Louder. You are breaking through. Louder. Everywhere, everywhere, louder. Bring us a massabaili game on Okinda Bana. When I pray in tongues, my spirit frees, but my understanding is unfruitful. In Jesus' name. Wow. Celebrate Jehovah.